First things first, happy Valentine's Day. May it be a day full of love as it was intended to be. But fret not if it's not a day of romantic love for you this year, your time will come soon enough. And honestly, eating Valentine's Day candy and watching one of my videos sounds way better than cuddling with a significant other, in my opinion. Dude, he's lying! He's lying! He's lying! When it became time to strategize what kind of video I wanted to do for such a holiday, I can't lie, the idea came super quick. I wanted to, of course, talk about music with strong themes of love, but when I narrowed which artists to talk about down to one, it became very clear that it was necessary to talk about heartbreak as well. This artist came on the scene, caught fire, and unfortunately met his demise shortly after. But in the short amount of time in the flesh and the many years posthumously, he showcased this incredible knack for storytelling as it pertains to falling in love, being in love, and seeing that love fade away. Showcasing just how much of a roller coaster it is to feel this strong about someone. Today we're going to be talking about one of the most underrated rock and roll artists of all time. And in my opinion, the king of explaining true love and heartbreak. And he goes by the name Buddy Holly. Charles Hawley, famously known as Buddy Hawley, officially began his musical career in 1952 following the TV appearance performing I Just Pretend alongside friend and bandmate Bob Montgomery. Fast forward a couple years and Buddy and his band began shifting from their country and western style to the rock and roll and rockabilly sound that would go on to solidify them among the greats in music. It was in that same year that Buddy and the band would begin opening for Elvis Presley a couple times and began picking up steam. In 1957, Buddy Holly and the Crickets would chart and chart high with singles That Would Be The Day and Peggy Sue. For the next year or two, Buddy Holly would drop two more albums full of hits that would be the foundation of his never-ending tour schedule. A tour schedule that ultimately led to what we now know as the day music died. The Winter Dance Party Tour. A 24-show tour in the Midwest with no off days. A tour that required the artist to travel back and forth in the Midwest with buses that just weren't made for the job or the inclement weather during that winter. An estimated five buses broke down in between heading to destinations that were between 200 and 400 mile trips. This on top of the poorly made itinerary was making this tour more of a burden than an opportunity for these young piping hot musicians. So decisions were made and in an effort to get some much needed rest, and to avoid any more bus trouble going through two towns they had already traveled through, a plane was to be boarded and headed to North Dakota. But that plane came down soon after takeoff. Buddy Holly, growing young artist Richie Valens, JP the Big Bopper Richardson, along with pilot Roger Peterson, all passed away upon impact of the plane crashing. Valens was 17, Richardson 28, Peterson 21, and Holly 22. Entitled The Day Music Died for very obvious reasons, three artists with unlimited potential in music were robbed of fruitful careers for nothing. Buddy Holly is without a doubt one of my favorite artists of all time, because regardless of his young age at death, he has one of the most impressive discographies I've ever listened to. A discography that technically spans eight years, but realistically spans three short years. Three years of Buddy Holly writing out some of the best music, detailing the best and worst parts of falling in love. Something we're gonna dive headfirst into on this day of love. Buddy Holly is mainly known for music that has this happy-go-lucky, hopeful, puppy dog love tone to it such as songs like every day it's so easy to fall in love and dearest and plenty others but most of my favorite buddy holly songs highlight a very realistic writing style that in his short career only pops up a handful of times realistic in that he loves this person so so much that he never wants to let her go regardless of the difficult hurdles they'll have to jump through to survive together or realistic in that the love he thought to be real was dead and non-existent all along 
With such a short career living, his posthumous career continued to show his talent for decades following his death. It was on his second posthumous record, The Buddy Holly Story Volume 2, that featured the two songs we're discussing today. One being a beautiful wedding gift for his wife Maria shortly before his death, explaining his everlasting love for her in true love ways, the other being an honest cautionary tale of the hardest parts of heartbreak, learning the game. Raining in my heart Raining in my heart Raining in my heart Buddy Holly's very last studio recording session was October 21st, 1958. A session that included the recordings of It Doesn't Matter Anymore, and raining in my heart. It also included a more polished recording of a song that had already been recorded for a very special purpose. It served as a wedding gift. It was in June of that year, slightly before proposing to Maria Lena Holly, that the first version was laid down and to be gifted two months later in August for the couple's wedding. A song detailing the ups and downs of being in a committed relationship but knowing that throughout the downs, the love all in all will in fact never die because they unconditionally fight for one another. It's one of the more personal, endearing, and heartwarming songs he ever wrote and performed. True Love Ways. Just you know why Why you and I Off the bat, True Love Ways uses verbiage that immediately makes this song feel like a direct conversation between two lovers, and we have the bird's eye view of that conversation, a theme that will last throughout the entire song. The simplicity and conciseness of this song is just that to explain the complexity of true love. The ebbs and flows of love often makes or breaks a relationship, and it's in the next verse that Holly embraces the hard parts as it will only bring the two closer together going forward. Throughout the day Our true love Will bring us joys to share With those who really care Sometimes we feel sad It goes without saying that life is tough and continuously throws its best curveballs at us all. Some are fortunate enough to have a partner to read those curves and adjust going forward. In some ways, Buddy sounds like he's comforting his wife-to-be and letting her know those curveballs of overwhelming emotions have little to no chance of hitting her on his watch. And even when they inevitably do, he's still going to be there to help as much as he possibly can. Putting in the work that is required to keep this union strong is easy work when the love is as strong as it is. Allowing them to truly enjoy that love amongst themselves and share it with, and I quote, those who really care. Much like I stated before, Buddy Holly's concise nature in the lyrics here and in many of his songs make the track hit harder when you're in similar waters. Fully in love and ready to work at it every day with your partner, True Love Ways will hit all the right spots. The straightforward writing approach continues as it mostly did in Buddy Holly's discography. Only this time, Buddy in a way takes a fatherly approach in preparing a young man or woman for one of the hardest things they'll ever encounter. Heartbreak. <laughs> Hearts that are broken in love that's untrue Please go with learning the game When you love her and she doesn't love you You're only learning the game 
Unrequited love is in no way a new theme in Buddy Holly's music. Constantly has he explained how he felt so strongly for a girl and feeling that strongly made him feel blue. For example, his big hit a year prior in Peggy Sue. But here he takes the time to be very direct with the message, and that's to simply teach the ones that are next up. He knows he can't simply help anyone avoid heartbreak as it almost seems inevitable. But following that heartbreak, this song's lyrics almost reassures that it's just a part of the process and learning the hard way will only help. She says that you're the only one she'll ever love When you find that you are not the one she's thinking of Feeling so sad and you're all wrong and blue That's when you're learning the game It's only been one occasion when I needed to hear this song for heartbreaking purposes. But man, did I need it in that moment. It's simply a minute long sit down with Holly reassuring that yeah, this sucks and your feelings of uncertainty and self-doubt are incredibly valid. But quite literally, you're learning the game. Stand tall, keep your head up, and move forward. This tone of teaching a lesson is coming from someone that's obviously been through it, and that's what makes Buddy Holly one of my favorite artists of all time. He just feels like one of us. A person who is trying their best and along the way finds themselves in situations that either are really great or really suck. For the portions that suck, how you respond is very important for your growth, whether it's straight up heartbreak or the trials and tribulations of a functioning relationship. Putting your best foot forward and trusting the process will, in heartbreak's case, keep you moving forward, loving yourself, improving yourself, and finding that one true love eventually. And in the other case, keeping you grounded in the overarching goal with your partner. And the duality of Buddy Holly explaining both true love and heartbreak in the way he was able to do so in his short life and career makes him the king of my book. That's me, you know.